Hello everyone, welcome to video three of the basic EKG detective series. This month we are going to be looking at the differences between sinus arrest and sinus exit block. The EKG detective is dedicated to helping healthcare professionals make the transition from using inductive EKG interpretation skills to deductive EKG interpretation skills. If you're interested in finding out the differences between the two, I would encourage you to go back to the first video where we, where we spent a little bit of time talking about the differences between the two. But for this series, I am going to follow Sherlock Holmes's lead and tell you that once you use EKG deduction, it becomes elementary in the aspect that it is much easier to wield and utilize when you're trying to interpret what an ECG rhythm is. Throughout this entire series, we are going to use two job aids. The first job aid is the EKG Detective Interpretation Checklist. The nice thing about this checklist is it really helps illustrate the mechanics of how deduction works. And if you're interested, just reach out to me at relevanceineducation.com and let me know that you would like a copy of the checklist and I will make sure that I email one out to you so that you can use that as we go throughout this series. The second job aid that we are going to be using throughout this entire series is the EKG Detective phone app. It is available at the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. All you need to do is keyword search EKG Detective and it will take you to where you can download a copy of the app. It's something that's not required, but it is a little bit easier to use in the aspect that it will more directly walk you through the process of deduction than the checklist will, but you by no means need to have a copy downloaded to work through this series. So the biggest question to ask is who can benefit from using EKG Detective? And the answer to that is anybody who is struggling with an ECG interpretation. The nice thing about this process is it allows you to focus on the waveforms and the things that you can see in the ECG and you don't have to spend as much time focusing on the criteria within an ECG. For this video, we are going to be using these two ECG tracings. One is an example of a sinus rest and the other is an example of a sinus exit block. But the first question that the app is going to be asking us is the rhythm regular or irregular. And looking at these two ECG tracings, they are irregular. It does appear like there's some pauses, but we will be addressing those pauses here in the next couple of slides. But since it is irregular, we are going to select irregular in the app, and then we will select next. Referring to our checklist, since we know the rhythm is irregular, we can deductively eliminate any of the rhythm options that are regular. And as a side note, um, anybody who is interested and would like a copy of this checklist, um, just reach out to me and I will make sure that you get a copy of it so that you can utilize it for future reference in future videos. Question two is going to ask us if the irregularity is possibly caused by PACs, PJCs, or PVCs. So let's go ahead and take a look again at the criteria for these fundamental ectopic beats. A PAC is going to be a beat that's going to have a different looking P wave from the underlying rhythm, but the PR interval is going to be normal between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. A PJC is going to be a beat that is either missing P waves, or if there is a P wave in front of the QRS, it is generally going to be inverted and retrograde, and the PR interval is going to be short at less than 0.12 seconds. And then a PVC is going to be a beat that has a totally different looking QRS complex in comparison to the underlying rhythm. So when we apply these criteria to all these beats within this ECG, it doesn't appear like we have PACs, PV, PJCs or PVCs. So we will go to the app, we will select no, and then we'll hit next to go to the next screen. Going back to our checklist, since we have no PACs, PJCs, or PVCs, we can deductively eliminate those off of our checklist. 
The third question is going to ask us if there are identifiable QRS complexes. Looking at this rhythm, we definitely have QRS complexes that are identifiable and distinguishable. So we will go to our app and we will select yes, and then we will hit next to go to the next screen. On our EKG checklist, since we do have identifiable QRS complexes, we can automatically eliminate ventricular fibrillation because that rhythm does not have definable QRS complexes. Question four brings us to whether there is irregularity possibly caused by pauses. Now this can be a pretty confusing area of criteria. So let's go ahead and revisit what constitutes a pause and what does not constitute a pause. Okay, so looking at this ECG, it appears like there might be a pause between this flashing bracket. So to make that determination, what we would need to do is we want to measure the R to R intervals before and after this gap. And as we look at these intervals, it doesn't appear like there's any consistent intervaling. And when we actually measure the intervals, um, there is no consistent R to R um, intervaling before or after this gap. So since there isn't consistent intervaling, this is not a pause. Um, it's just a larger gap within a rhythm that is basically irregular. Looking at this example, uh, we do have a larger gap, so it does appear like there may be a pause, but what we need to do is we want to measure the R to R intervals before and after this gap. And when we measure those intervals, we do have consistent intervaling between the R to R intervals before, as well as after this gap. So since they are consistently intervaled, this is a pause and it is not a gap. So to reiterate, what we need to look for to have an actual pause is consistent R to R intervaling before and after the gap. And if that is the case, then we do have a pause. All right, now that we review the criteria for pauses, looking at this first CCG, we have a R to R interval that's about 0.72 seconds. And measuring this across the other RRs, they also measure 0 uh, 0.72 seconds. So we do have a pause for this first ECG. The second ECG has a R to R interval of about one second. And when we take that interval and compare that to the measurable R to Rs, they are also one second as well. So both of these ECGs have pauses. So we'll go to our app, we will select yes, and then hit next to go to the next screen. Referring to our checklist, since we do have pauses, that means we can eliminate sinus arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation, as well as wandering atrial pacemaker because those three rhythms typically aren't associated with pauses. Question five is asking, are there P waves that appear to be sawtooth and or flutter waves? And looking at the CCG, it doesn't appear like we have any extra P waves or flutter waves in this rhythm. So we will go to our app, we will select no, and then we'll hit next to go to the next screen. Looking at our checklist, since we don't have flutter waves, that allows us to get rid of atrial flutter because flutter is associated with uh, flutter waves or F waves. Question six is asking if we have discernible P waves. Looking at these P waves, they appear to be very discernible and um, right in front of the QRS. So we will go to our app, we will select yes for discernible P waves, then we'll hit next to go to the next screen. Referring back to our checklist, since we do have discernible P waves, we would normally get rid of atrial fibrillation. But since uh, atrial fibrillation was eliminated when we were looking at the regularity of the rhythm, it's just a check and a double check of that criteria. Question seven is asking, are there three or more different shaped P waves? Looking back at our P waves, it appears like they are all pretty similarly shaped. There definitely is not any different morphology. So there is not different shaped P waves. We will go to our app, select no, and then we will hit next. 
referring to our checklist, since there are not three or more different looking shaped P waves, that would allow us to get rid of Wandering Angel Pacemaker. But we already eliminated Wandering Angel Pacemaker when we were looking at pauses because they typically aren't associated with pauses. So once again, this is a check and a double check for that criteria just to make sure that we aren't missing or that we are properly eliminating a Wandering Angel Pacemaker. Question eight is asking us if there are extra P waves or if there's more than one P wave for every QRS. And looking at our P waves, uh, they are definitely there, but it doesn't appear like we have extra P waves. So we will go to our app and we will select no, and then we will hit next to go to the next screen. Uh, for those working through the checklist, since there are no extra P waves, that allows us to get rid of the two rhythms on our list that are associated with extra P waves, which are secondary type ones and secondary type twos. Question nine is asking, what is the PR interval? So when we look at these PR intervals, we are running somewhere between about 0.16 to 0.18 seconds. So we will go over to our app and we are going to select 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. Then we will hit next to go to the next screen. Referring back to the checklist, since we do have normal PR intervals that are running about 0.16 to 0.18 seconds, that means that we can eliminate any rhythm that doesn't have a normal PR interval, which are the two rhythms that have first degree heart blocks. The last screen that the app is going to be taking us to before we get to our interpretations is whether or not marching across the pause, does the R to R interval match up when the rhythm resumes after the pause? So looking at our top example, we've already measured the R to R interval for this top example. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that interval and march it across the pause and see what happens when the rhythm actually picks back up. And looking at this uh, pause here, when the rhythm picks back up, the R to R interval does not match up. Whereas the ECG on the bottom here, when we take that R to R interval and measure that across the pause, when the rhythm picks back up, we actually do match up with the QRS complex when the rhythm picks back up. So looking at the top example, since the QRS complex does not match up when it resumes, that would make it a sinus arrest. Whereas if the R to R intervals do march out, that would make it a sinus exit block. So to summarize, the difference between a sinus arrest and a sinus exit block is the duration of the pause. When you're looking at a sinus arrest and marching across the pause, when the rhythm resumes, the R to R intervals will not match up. Whereas when you're looking at a sinus exit block and you're marching across the pause, when the rhythm resumes, it will match up with the R to R. All right, that brings us to the end of this episode. I just want to reiterate, if you would like to get a copy of the ECG detective checklist, uh, just reach out to me and I'll make sure that you get a copy of it. Also, if you have any questions about the EKG detective phone app, you can reach out to me at relevanceineducation.com and I would be more than happy to try to answer any questions or get you the resources that you need. And um, if you haven't done so, um, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe um, and like this video because it definitely would help out as I'm trying to get this channel up and running. And I appreciate you for sitting through this video. And just remember that it is always better to practice as a clinician rather than a technician. See you next month.